the Mount Sinai Surgical Film Atlas. The patient is taken into the operating room and asked to sit on the OR table where their incision site in the right axillary fold of the arm is pre-marked. This can also be done prior to entering the operating room. We also mark guidelines for the cutaneous pocket that will be created in order to access the thyroid lobe. The transaxillary approach to a thyroidectomy is an alternative to the traditional cervical incision and has a greater cosmetic benefit of leaving no visible scars on the patient's neck. Once the patient has been pre-marked, place the patient in the supine position on the operating table. We feel that vocal cord assessment is an important part of the pre-operative workup. Assessment of the vocal cords can be done using a flexible laryngoscope and can be performed in the office prior to the procedure or in the OR as seen here. First, spray the nasal passage with a local anesthetic, then insert the flexible laryngoscope to assess the vocal cords for bilateral mobility. We routinely use intraoperative nerve monitoring during this procedure to gauge the integrity of the laryngeal nerves during the dissection of the thyroid lobe. To set up the nerve monitor, we use an endotracheal tube equipped with monitoring electrodes. Insert the endotracheal tube in the usual fashion. Once inserted, the electrode should sit adjacent to both vocal cords. Next, you can complete the nerve monitoring circuit by placing the grounding electrodes as indicated by the device instructions. Here, we have done so on the forehead and left shoulder. A nerve monitor works by stimulating the nerve with an electrode that sends an electronic current through the nerve which in turn stimulates the vocal cords to move. Stimulation is manifested as an audible sound and as an EMG waveform created on the nerve monitoring device as seen here. In addition to preoperative ultrasounds, we perform an additional ultrasound in the operating room prior to beginning the procedure in order to confirm and assess the pathology of the thyroid. Once completed, reposition the patient so that their right arm is padded and in the abducted position, extended above their head and flexed at the elbow in a relaxed manner. The patient's head is turned slightly to the left to allow for better exposure to the right thyroid lobe. Prep and drape the patient in a sterile fashion. The sterile area should extend to the patient's upper abdomen and include the breasts. Next, the base of the external thyroid retractor can be secured to the OR table in preparation for its use later in the case. Mount the retractor on the opposite side of the patient's incision. For a right-sided incision, we prefer this operating room setup with both the surgeon and assistant on the patient's right. First, make an incision approximately five centimeters long in the anterior axilla, and begin to create the cutaneous pocket anterior to the pectoralis major muscle. Insert an external thyroid retractor and secure it in place in order to preserve visualization. This procedure uses laparoscopic instruments but is a completely gasless system. However, suction tubing is connected to remove smoke from the use of ultrasonic and Bowley devices. With the retractor in place, you can extend the cutaneous pocket until you reach the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This brief animation shows how the sternal and clavicular heads are separated to reveal the thyroid lobe. Then, 
The thyroid is carefully dissected from the surrounding tissue. Great care is taken to avoid damage to the laryngeal nerves. Once completely dissected, the thyroid lobe is removed. Remove the thyroid retractor and any remaining instruments. Close the axillary incision in layers using a running 3-0 vicryl for the subcuticular layer and a 4-0 monocryl for the skin. Okay. The patient is taken into the operating room and asked to sit on the 